My name is Marcus Koh. I'm the World Yo-Yo Champion and I'm the six times national champion. I got into yo-yoing in 2003. It was based off this cartoon called the Super Yo-Yo. Uh, when I was first watching it, I was 10 years old, so I was really small at that time. But the anime had a really captivating story. So the main character in the story, right, he has a dream of being the world champion. But at the same time, he does not really have the talent, but what he has was hard work. So that kind of storyline kind of resonated with me. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, I made it my dream to become a world champion as well. Okay, to be honest, the moment I started Yo-Yo, I threw myself into competition already. Uh, in 2003, when I first started being in my own world, I was living inside the anime Super Yo-Yo world. So I was thinking like, oh, I, I should be one of the best. So I went to com the Yo-Yo contest. I did my very best, despite not learning much tricks from the pros. And I somehow got into finals and got top 10. So that's what got me started on Yo-Yoing. And as for how long it took, to, for me to become world champion, it takes, let me think, 2003, it took eight years, eight whole years for me to become the world champion. Yes, that's about it. Oh, wow, okay. I, st I still remember very well. This was the very, very first trick that I created. So at that point of time, I started learning the green triangle. So people were, were teaching me how to do green triangle this way. So I thought that was really cool already. So with my limited knowledge, I tried to create my own trick and I did this. And then at that point of time, Tangler was a thing. So I did this and then I imagined I was doing Tangler, but on a single A yo-yo and then hit and then hit back in the green triangle and then come out. So that was like my first trick. <laughs> oh, my most recent trick. Uh, it's from, I, I, I learned a new trick recently, but there will probably be the double DNA. That's what I'm very proud of showing off. Holy I do create tricks from time to time, but I do not practice them as much now. Um, yeah, because that's because I do not compete anymore. I just make them because I think it's cool but I don't think it's cool enough to show them to non yo players. So I do not practice all these new tricks as much. In fact, I practice more on <laughs> Eli Hops and DNA whenever I'm teaching my yo-yo kids or new players, yeah. I was most well-known of my behind-the-back tricks and my behind-the-back horizontal tricks. So it looks something like that. And this is my new prototype. It is an aluminum stainless steel yo-yo. I've decided to make it a little bit more undersized than the yo-yos I've designed so far. So this is my first take on an undersized yo-yo. If you ask me if there's any improvement, so far everybody has been telling me it's really great. I want to hear more negative feedback. So because it's, it's just like who I am, you know, when I try to create a new trick, when I try to be the very best, I always want to hear the bad things about me because I always hear the good things and the good things will kind of put you in your own comfort zone. You want to have a good balance of good comments and constructive criticisms. In that way, no matter wherever you are in life, in any art form you pursue, you know that you're always improving. I have an issue uh, where I order my prototype and I fall in love with it right away. I know, right? I know, right? I think this is the, the designer, the designer biasness because we put in effort in something, we design it and when we some, see it in reality, we, we have that, what's, what's the term that you call it when animals are born and they see it for the first time? So you have a, some sort of emotional connection to it. So I try to detach myself from that feeling when I design a yo-yo and try to be a little bit more objective about it. But as much as I try to be objective about it, there's always some sort of biasness. Yes. Okay, this is my take on an Eiffel Tower trick. It's one of the oldest tricks in my book.
Okay, the secret to this trick is actually very simple. All you have to do is to hit on your left hand. And from here, your left hand is going to pinch this string. So you're going to hit this your back, hit this string back and pinch it like this. And just whip it through the whole yo-yo. And while the yo-yo is whipped, the string is whipped, you're going to turn it over and then it becomes an Eiffel Tower. All in one motion. Yes. And, and little, the little tips you were giving me for that. Ah, oh, right. And the little tips. When you slack the whip into the string, you want to replace this string with your thumb as you go over at the same time. So that when you come, it becomes one smooth tr transition to an Eiffel Tower. And it looks like that. This. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram. My name is Marcus Ko, M A R C U S K Zero H. Or you can follow my YoYo brand at Toro Revolution. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that was perfect. <laughs>